Hometown. What does it mean? What is it that clearly defines the term hometown? According to Webster's Dictionary, hometown is defined as the town where one was born or grew up, or the town of one's permanent fixed residence. To many, home is where the heart is. But what happens when that home and the heart of the community is ripped out from under you? This is my hometown, Downsville, New York. Downsville is small. Only 300 students attend its school. There is one bank, two convenience stores, and two bars. And that's pretty much it. What defines Downsville, though, is what lies above it. 147 billion gallons of water. Downsville is the home of the Downsville Dam of the Papacton Reservoir, one of the largest earthen dams on the planet. The Downsville Dam holds back the waters of the once mighty east branch of the Delaware River. At the turn of the 20th century, the east branch was a river of great commerce. Timber cut from the Catskill Mountains surrounding it would be lashed together into rafts and floated down the east branch to markets as far south as Philadelphia. Along the river east of Downsville, thriving communities were home to hundreds who earned their livings in the mountains, on the river, or on the fertile farm lands that spread across the river valley. Along the Delaware and Ulster train line that headed in that direction, the first stop you came to was the village of Papacton. Then came Union Grove. Farther along was Shavertown. Then Arena. In the early 1900s, these villages had no idea that their days were numbered. 130 miles to the south, New York City was flourishing also. Immigrants were arriving at Ellis Island and quickly filling the city streets and tenements. While America opened its arms to immigration, New York City was unprepared for the influx of so many new residents. Human beings need water and sanitation to survive, and New York City was desperate to provide them. In 1926, New York City's Bureau of Water Supply brought forth a plan to construct a series of reservoirs reaching as far as western Delaware County. Phase one of the project would construct reservoirs in Dutchess, Columbia, and Rensselaer counties. Phase two would include two reservoirs in Delaware County, including the Pepacton. The first phase of the plan had barely begun in 1937 when the State Water and Power Control Commission urged the accelerated development of phase two. Engineering studies and surveying began. The villages of Pepacton, Union Grove, Shavertown, and Arena had been handed their death sentences. World War II intervened. A stay of execution had been given to the tiny villages, but in 1947, with America's economy booming and New York City's need for water greater than ever before, the first bulldozers began to arrive in the East Branch Valley. Thousands of men, most veterans of the war, descended on Downsville to find work building the dam and the tunnels that would carry the water to New York City. For almost 10 years, the economy in Downsville thrived. A short distance up the river, however, villages were dying, families were being torn apart, and history was being erased. By the time the reservoir project was complete, a total of 13,384 acres had been claimed through eminent domain for use by New York City. Webster's defines eminent domain as the right of a government or its agent to expropriate private property for public use with payment of compensation. Or, as New York City bureaucrats are so fond of saying, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. In providing for the needs of the many, Pepacton, Union Grove, Shavertown, and Arena had paid the ultimate price. 974 people including 284 children and 46 wards of the state were forced to move. The BWS counted 260 residences, 113 farms, 8 churches, 8 stores, 8 garages, 3 taverns, 3 hotels, 8 sawmills, 2 barber shops, 2 water companies, 5 schools, 4 post offices, a grange hall, a feed store, a firehouse, and a chiropractor's office among those to be burned to the ground were moved out of the valley. Enumerators counted 2,336 cows, 6,135 chickens, 103 horses, 99 pigs, and 24 sheep and goats that would be removed, alive or dead, from the valley. 
the loss of home wasn't confined only to the living. 2,371 graves in 10 cemeteries were disinterred and relocated to cemeteries outside the flood zone. On September 15, 1954, the impoundment of water began in the Pipacton Reservoir. On January 9, 1955, the first water from the Pipacton flowed to New York City. It had taken New York City and thousands of construction workers 29 years to build the reservoir and rid the valley of its inhabitants. It had taken Mother Nature less than four months to flood the reservoir and erase all evidence of the lives that had been lived there. Now, Downsville stands alone, a shell of its former self. The trains run no more. The mighty East Branch that once carried timber to Philadelphia sometimes won't allow the passage of one man riding in a canoe. Gone is the fertile river valley that once sustained the residents of the area. However, Downsville survives, mainly because the people of the area, some of which were relocated from villages now hundreds of feet underwater, refused to allow their heritage to slip away once again. They band together to fight in times of need, remembering the times when they were left to fight alone. They rejoice in each other's successes and work every day to remember the past. Why? Because Downsville is home, and home is where the heart is. Our hometown is special, though, because it contains more than one heart. Downsville also holds the pieces of hearts of four of its old neighbors, old friends who long ago slipped beneath the waters of the Pacton.